Welcome to this episode of Pen to Paper Press Podcast. I'm Cindy Coaches. There is a backstory weaved into each book. To explore the creative process, I'm sitting down with authors, writers, editors, publishers, and an array of creative souls to have a conversation centered on how they develop their stories to completing their works of art. Each episode is an opportunity for us to explore mindsets, pearls of wisdom, and the experiences that began our journey as an author from the moment we put pen to paper. Leslie K. Brooks, author of Education Aggravation, a retired teacher's view from the trenches, a call to action, has always had a passion for writing. In 2002, Leslie decided she had more to offer than acting. She went back to school earned her MA in teaching and special education. Her passion for teaching her students in transforming and transcending the self led her to write Education Aggravation. Welcome, Leslie. It is wonderful to have this time to talk to you about your passion for writing. Thank you, Cindy. (laughs) I'm very excited to be here. Um, Yeah, I've loved writing my whole life. Um, I I began writing, well, when I was in high school, I specifically remember, uh, I, I wrote, I always wrote a lot of poetry and short stories. And actually, even back in grade school, I remember I uh, had a cousin who was autistic and I remember writing a poem after spending some time with him um, about autism and about how how I felt about, you know, his world and what I saw. And I've always been fascinated to try to explore uh, with words uh, different aspects of life, I guess you would say. <laughs> That's interesting. So how long have you been writing? Has it been something you've done, you know, like, say, from childhood most of your life? Or is it something that you really got interested in at a later age? Well, I've I've always been interested in writing, but like I said, it was mostly poetry. I've written poetry for almost every single occasion for different people, um, like birthdays. I would always have a birthday poem and I would always have a, a holiday poem, um, a special events, anniversaries. I, I always wrote uh, about that person and integrated that event into it. In fact, um, my partner always said, well, you should go into greeting cards. I don't know why you don't go into greeting cards. And he bought me a greeting card program, but I, because of the technology, (laughs) I wasn't as savvy as he was. I uh, never really pursued it. But every time I go to the store now, I think, gosh, why didn't I start writing greeting cards? I'm so much better than this. (laughs) So uh, that was a, you know, one area. And um, even in school, um, I wrote, you know, different subjects like in uh, LA, ELA, which is English language arts, for those of you who don't know. Um, I would write uh, poetry when the time came, you know, and my students had to do it. And I would do it too. Uh, And, you know, we'd all share. Uh, I did a um, uh, poem, uh, what kind of rap? I forgot. I uh, forgot the name of that. Uh, when they, when you, when you have spoke, well, spoken word poetry. Okay. Uh, I used to have the class write uh, spoken word poetry, and we would have uh, a whole session sitting at tables, drinking our, you know, well, they had juice and cookies. <laughs> And uh, everybody would perform their poem, and it was uh, it was very exciting to see that. That would be and, fun. And um, I also wrote, yeah, a po- I also wrote some poetry, like introducing concepts that we were learning. 
mm-hmm. so that the definitions would kind of would be in the poem. And so I, I wrote a lot of that. I've always kept a journal um, on and off, uh, but mostly on. I, I got into it when I was in college. Uh, I guess around that time I was living in New York and I, I read The Artist's Way. Oh, I love that And book. so I made it a point. Yes, it's a great book. I made it a point to write every morning, you know, or if I couldn't do it in the morning, it would be during whatever time I had to make sure that I just wrote. So I, I've always been into writing. I really, I love words. I was an actress for um, 20 years or so in New York. So uh, I wrote some monologues, uh, never wrote a play. <laughs> Uh, but I have had friends that wrote plays. And, uh, yeah, so it's always been a way of expressing myself. You know, you can, you don't have to yell. You can write it in big cap and angry letters, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. I like how you use your your words in written form to express because that is truly one way for us to get it out of our head and and move that uh, quote unquote stuck energy you know that keep it from looping in our mind uh by expressing it is just a great outlet and writing is what i have found to really um yeah get it out of my head (laughs) getting it out of your system absolutely it was so important it's so funny because when i wrote this book uh I had a lot of anger going you know and at first it was like my dad read the first chapter of it and he said it's a rant Leslie it's a rant (laughs) I was like no it's going to be a book it's just I have to get the rant out of me in order to shape it (laughs) you know so and, and that's how it happened basically the uh, the rant and I, I would say that you know I think it's really important to express your emotions but I tend to be kind of shy and um, I don't want to say afraid to let go but a lot of times I stuff things mm-hmm. so the words words help me on a page they really help me express myself and, and get my anger out. As a matter of fact, in one of the stories in my book, uh, one of the little anecdotes that I have, um, it tells the story of a, a boy who took a cell phone uh, and was abusing it in class. And I went to take it from him and he pulled it back and he said, don't touch my property you know, you have no right to touch my property and whatever. And it turned into a very big to do because he went to the, I, I, I wrote him up instead of answering him back. I wrote him up in angry words and I say, I grabbed the cell phone and he yanked it back and whatever. And the, they used it against me. And not only that, but they turned it into something bigger into uh, oh I grabbed his you know arm and I did this and that and I was like that didn't happen of course I had witnesses so that was good um, but the whole point is is that my words reflected my anger at the time you know so I went to grab the cell phone and he yanked it back is kind of a very descriptive and you know one thing they kept using against me was you yourself said you grabbed the cell phone i said well i did you know i i went to take the cell phone and uh the anyway so yes i use words to express myself and my emotions so then with writing this book was this something like you sat and took notes during the day? Obviously, it's 
things that have happened to you as a teacher because of, of how your title is worded. Um, so is this like you had written various notes uh, or stories down and then you just kind of put them together? Or was this, you know, over a period of time? Or was this something that you sat down and said, you know, I want to share this, 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 and this. And, you know, you took a, a shorter amount of time and wrote it. Yeah. Um, what happened was I was told and, I mean, teachers are told to write down uh, thing incidents that happened to them mm -hmm. with administration um, or and with children um, be for our own safety to have it in a written form so that, you know, if anything comes of it, we have our version mm -hmm. there in writing. And uh, so there are stories that I wrote down along the way but I wrote it as a safety mm -hmm. net for me. Um, and also a couple letters that I have written to administration and which I didn't include in my book, but um, those incidents were just an illustration. I used those incidents as an illustration mm -hmm. of a bigger point uh, that I wanted to make. So not so much that, the book was basically organic. I mean, it started a month after I retired. And it took me, I would say, uh, hmm, well, it published in March. So it took me a year from start to um, a year and a couple months from start to finish. So it wasn't... It wasn't like I took all these stories and right. strung them together. It was more like I researched and I wanted to, you know, really make my points that this wasn't just something that happened to me. It's something that's happening in the schools. And it's something that's happening okay. on a large scale. And, you know, we need to get with the program. <laughs> so I really wanted to kind of let parents and teachers and administration know and actually politicians that we need to restructure our education program you okay. know so it was more about the message than so the going back incidents. to you know you mentioned uh when your dad read the first chapter that he's like oh leslie this is a rant it's not a book you know when we're doing that first draft that's what it is. It is a brain dump. It is us getting whatever out on the page. And then through the editing process, we rein it back. We clean it up. We finish the thoughts or, you know, fill in the thoughts so that it, it reads <laughs> like a story versus, you know, as, right. as, uh, you know, just to keep the word going, a, a rant. So when you went to, you know, you, you, read, you wrote it out and then you went back to edit it, was the editing process something that really helped you to see how, how the development of the book, that flow to go? Uh, yeah, it did. I, but but I'm like a person who writes and then reads okay. it over to make sure it makes sense and rewrites like that chapter and so that it makes sense to me. And then I actually, I mean, I, I don't know how many times I've read over and over my work and edit it. Like it's not just one. Okay edit session it's like a constant a constant like does it flow right is it is it making sense does it you know 
is this an order, correct order? Because that was something that I had a difficulty with was where am I going? Mm -hmm. Where do I want to go with this? You know, how does it, how do I tie in all these subjects? And what do I want to say about them? And it it got to be a bigger and bigger Did you use an outline then or did it, did you write the content and then organize it that way? Right. I wrote the content and organized it that way. I know they recommend that you write an outline of this, you know, your big story and then this chapter and that chapter. Well, you know, coming out with the little circles and how you're going to break it down and then how you're going to break down those circles. They know they recommend that, but I'm not, I'm, I do things more organically than that. I'm not a big planner uh, as far as that goes. I'm like, where is this going? Where's this going? And it, you know, I think about it and then I think about it and it comes to me where, where I'm going with this, the next step. So it's more of something that grows from where I'm at to where the next step should be. Um, but it's, it's a process of dreaming and daydreaming and um, You're following meditating the journey. on it. <laughs> So it's, it's not, yes, it is a, it's, it is a journey. It is a journey. I mean, it's different. I think if, you know, writing different things, like if I had, I I guess even with a book, I mean, a a fiction book, I would still have to, Mm -hmm. I might have an overall arching plan, but how do I get from here to there? for me would be the journey of it, it ha, you know, it, it, the flow, like, and that's the thing. It's like you get mm-hmm. into this flow of writing, not every day, but I mean, every day I pretty much made myself write a certain number of words, you know, well, you at least have to do a hundred words or a paragraph or something, but when I got into certain areas that it just flowed, it just came out and I wasn't aware of, of where it was, you know, what I was writing. I was aware of what I was writing, mm-hmm. but it, it, yes. it spoke itself. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It, 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 it t- almost like it's in there yes, it and does. it just comes out of you. Yeah. As part of the process. <laughs> and it's, it's weird. Um, and one thing I wanted to achieve was, you know, I wanted it to be in my words and, um, and like, I didn't want it to sound well, and, and I'm not that way, pretentiously educated. You know, which a lot of books about school do sound, and they use all these buzzwords, and nobody really knows what they're talking about exactly. And I, I really didn't want it to be that way, you know. So, again, I had to, but I, to make it the other, you know, I had to make it the other way. It was uh, something that um, I had to work on so that. It was fell somewhere in between sounding like intellectual mm-hmm. and not just feelings based. Um, my editor actually helped me a lot with the uh, filling in the research. I mean, she didn't fill it in for me, but she said, you know, if you're going to make this point, then you need to have this to back it up. You know, you need to back it up. And... I, she made me write a lot more than I had intended because I wasn't going to be doing that much research, (laughs) but it turned out that I did a lot of research for it. And, uh, 
I thought, I think I was so much better than, you know, what I, what I could have written, what I did right without, without the research. Yes. I mean, it really gave it so substance. So then was the definition. whole entire book writing process what so. you anticipated it would be like? Because, you know, we have this, you know, visual in our mind of what a writer does and what they look like and you know they grab their morning coffee or tea and they sit at their computer and the words just pour out when in reality yeah we grab our cup of caffeine and we sit at the computer and go okay what am i writing today um hmm i could word the i could write the word the 50 times <laughs> let's see <laughs> i mean so was your was you know yeah, was yeah. the process of writing for you a different experience than what you had anticipated or thought it would be um i guess because i had written before and i knew how much energy it takes to find the words that you really want to use you know, or say, to express what you want to say, that it, I knew it was going to be somewhat time consuming. And there were days that were <laughs> much more frustrating <laughs> than I thought, you know, I was like, Oh, I already said that. What else do I want to say? You know, <laughs> um, so that was different. Every one of us goes through that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a book. It's It's got to be a certain amount of pages. You know, it's like, and it ended up being a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, I hadn't intended to write that much, but it ended up being a lot longer. And it was funny because, again, so many times I struggled to get through a certain part of the book. And, you know, what, what flows here? What, how do mm -hmm. I connect this? How do I connect the dots here? You know, so, yeah, it was, it wasn't as easy as I, I, I don't know if I thought it was going to be easy, but I thought it was going to be, I didn't, I thought, okay. I thought it took a lot longer than I thought it would, you know, like, some people do their books in three months. I don't really know how they do that because, I mean, I spent hours writing, hours, you know, and it, when you go back over it and you, you look and see what you wrote and, you know, it didn't make, that didn't make sense or, you know, that doesn't sound right. And, you know, you, you read back and, and you keep reading back and, and looking and seeing how it, it is going. It, you know, and, and you end up with like a full day of corrections on what yes. you wrote rather than adding some new stuff, you know. Um, so I had days like that where I, I, I just look over and, wow, did I write? That doesn't even sound right, you know. that's not, That didn't say what I wanted it to say. And my other, um, my other place was a lot of times I write in that, like using the word it's, or instead of saying what it is. Um, and so I had to go back and really look at the specific, what am I talking about? You know, does the mm -hmm. other person know what I'm talking about? I know what I'm talking about, but will my audience know what I'm talking about? You know, and that is another way you have to look at your writing is not just from your perspective, but from what other people are going to see and read into right. it. And will they understand what you're trying to say? So that's a whole nother ball game. I mean, it's, it's one thing for you to know, but it's another thing that, everybody else can know you know it makes sense so yeah that that definitely um, makes sense because we know the message we're trying to relay 
it's, you know, it's very hard right. for us to edit our own work because we know what the word, what the intention is to be, but we don't always put that on the page. And the editor is the one who, or, you know, like a beta reader or someone who is not familiar say you have like your mother or a sister family member or a friend read the book and they're like uh cindy what is this what are you talking about wait a minute how did josie come into the picture when we were talking about sarah or whoever <laughs> so it, you know it is nice right, to have right. the that other set of eyes and and having an editor help you to go through and to develop that part of the story. Explain to me why. Yeah, and I didn't. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't want to have, like, after my dad read that first part and said that, I was like, I don't want anybody to read my book yet. I'm not ready. Um, and so through the writing process I didn't let anybody except the editor read I, I let somebody read a chapter here or there mm -hmm. uh, or a few pages but I didn't let anyone read it because I felt like I, I couldn't afford to have criticism while I was writing oh um, yes I didn't want anybody to stop my process or make me self-conscious about what I was writing. So I felt like I had to get it down without uh, sharing it with anybody that I knew. And that was hard because I could talk about it. I would talk about it, but I didn't want to share it. And that, that definitely caused a little riff here <laughs> in my home. <laughs> but um, I just didn't want... I just didn't feel that 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 people knew what I knew about the subject and that I without being finished I needed to get it out. You know, I needed to get the whole thing out before anyone looked at anything. And and even so, even with the I mean with the editor you know, while I was doing that process, I, I still didn't let anyone see it. Mm -hmm. So that was really important to me to keep that work private. Now, I don't feel like that about, I've written a, a children's book now that is, I'm just waiting to get an illustrator for it. Nice. And um, I didn't feel like that about that. Like I've let a couple people read that because it it wasn't as personal. Mm -hmm. Like I, I mean, I have a, a real passion about the feeling of ed, of education and how you know we should be dealing with it and where it's going or where it's not going and the lie of the whole thing. I don't feel that way about the children's book. I feel like I'm educa trying to educate and stimulate, which is a whole different process, mm -hmm. whole different ideas. This, you know, so I'm willing to, I'm willing to take a little bit more uh, outside opinion on it than, than I was for the, the other book. So then with the children's book, you have one done and you're waiting for the illustrator? Do you, are you planning to do like a series of the children's books or? Um, I have one done and I haven't decided on if I'm going to expand that or if I'm going to do another children's book that's a little okay. different. Because uh, I have a couple ideas that I'm floating <laughs> Um, but I, the illustrator is the issue at this time. So I'm going to be diving into that shortly. So it's been hard. The marketing, I have to tell you the, the process is huge. It's, mm -hmm. it's a huge deal to write a book. You know, it's not just about the writing. 
And that's, that's the part Mm -hmm. that I didn't realize. You know, I thought, you know, you write a book. I didn't know that you had to get an editor. And I, I mean, I didn't think about those kind of things. I just thought, of the book (laughs) you know you write the book and you get your message out and that's it but it's not like that it's there's a whole process that's not about writing the book or it's about writing the book like the editing process I mean that was that was a big uh extended period of time I thought um where I, you know, like I said, I was forced to do some research and really back up my claims and um, put all the, 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 have the, in, the, not the index, the, uh, the bibliography at the end and, um, and the end notes. And it was, it was a, it was a process of, that I hadn't counted on, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm going to, put a couple notes in here but no it was it it ended up much much more intense than that and then you know you have the editing you have the cover (laughs) and the cover was the issue that's another whole thing what do you want to say what do you want what do you want the audience to see how do you want to come across and that that was very difficult because I had some ideas it, I had to really compromise my ideas with the person who did my cover. Um, and I mean, I, I like the end product, but I don't love the end product. So um, that might be something that changes in the future. And there's the formatting that they have to do. And, you know, and all, every step of the way, you know, and then there's a the copyright I mean, there's like all these different steps that whoever thought, you know, you're thinking, create, create, you know, write and create and put it out there. And, and it's not like a blog, you know, (laughs) where you just write it and put it up online and there it is, you know, it's, it's, it really is a process and uh and the back cover and the front cover and you know um so there's a lot involved that that uh i i really had no idea and i really kind of needed guidance on you know in that part and now of course is the marketing and that's a whole nother ball game that that's not something I was good at in my acting career, and it's not something I'm great at now. <laughs> but I'm, I'm better. I'm fresher now. Marketing is now, very so. challenging. Um, as far as you know, the individuals I've talked to on the podcast, I would say ninety percent of uh, of the people when I've spoken to them about the marketing have said, "Oh." marketing you know and you can feel that oh it's just something i don't want to do somebody else do it for me and i'm in that boat i you know it's not something i enjoy doing (laughs) and and it is hard to put ourselves out there it is a form of vulnerability of exposing and you know you were talking about earlier about being criticized or critiqued on when you're writing your book and it you you just don't want to be told oh you didn't do it right why would you do it that way you don't want to be questioned and that's I mean yes we learn from all of that and it is important to have those insights but still ay 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 <laughs> I, yeah, marketing is, and I was in advertising sales for uh, both newspaper and radio for a total of, I think, well, just over nine years. And I, I can sell other people's stuff. I can, I could sell newspaper ads. I could sell radio ads. But when it comes to putting my stuff out there and selling my stuff, it is, it is a challenge. And so it's not salespeople that, are out there selling it. It's, I, I have yet to figure out what that key element is. 
uh, whether it's a bit of self-confidence or learning a, a new technique or what. And of course, I am always open to suggestions um, in that regards, but I would love to find out what it is that holds us back. And really, we find such displeasure on that whole marketing element. I mean, it's it's enough to drive a person crazy. Actually, it does drive us crazy. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah. I think for me, it's it's the uh, the idea of being rejected and um, you know told that I'm not good enough or uh, something um, and and telling people, yeah, you should buy my book. I mean, <laughs> well, that's a, that's a hard thing. I mean, even asking my friends to, you know, put reviews on Amazon. I mean, some of them haven't done it. I mean, they, I know they have a life, you know, I, I they have a life and it's not because they don't like me or they didn't like my book. They loved my book. They told me they loved my book, but they haven't gotten around to doing it. And that's hard. I mean, it's it's hard to remind them and to, you know, you have to stay on top of people. It's not their first, you're not their first thought, you know. They have a whole life. And especially in today's world, our lives are so crowded and busy with, you know, emails and, and grandkids and children and other things it it's like hard to find that moment where you can just sit and so then it's a, it's a minute out of that moment of just sitting <laughs> that you have to actually think about and somebody else and, you know oh go ahead but i think that mar marketing is that is such a hard such a hard issue uh for most of us and that's why a lot of people, you know, have people who do it for them. Yes. Yeah. You know. But you have to pay <laughs> to do that. Pay to play. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of it is that imposter syndrome, which is what you had mentioned, you know, you were describing when you were saying about the, you know, not wanting to feel rejected, so on and so forth. But um, and I was going to bring something else up and it just fell to the wayside. Um, oh, you said something and it, it triggered a thought and I'll oh, bugger it. It's, it's gone away. So evidently I'm not supposed to bring it up in conversation. <laughs> so. Oh no, it's all good. I I oh, no. <laughs> you know, I trust the intuition when when stuff when I have a question and then it goes away, that just tells me that nope, don't go there. <laughs> so it's it's all good. Right. Oh, talking about you were mentioning uh people, your friends not writing the the reviews and so forth. For somebody who is not a writer, somebody who's not in business, somebody who is not reliant or doesn't have the need to have a testimonial or a review, it's easier to set that aside because the value, the, the value that we, the non-writer, uh, would put on a testimonials. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get, I'll get to that. I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. It'll, you know, it's on the list of things to do. But those of us that you know are in business, sell a service or a product, we're looking for those testimonials because those testimonials are proof that hey, we've got a good product, we've got a good service, whatever it is, and. By having those testimonials or those reviews on our books, it's another way for us to market because somebody else is saying, hey, 
you know, Leslie's got a really good book and this is why I say it's good or this is why I would recommend it or suggest it to whomever. And there are times that, and, and I've, I've seen a couple of people do uh, where they will send uh, a reader or, or well, I'll, I'm going to put it back onto service or products um, and not necessarily books, but having a form that somebody completes uh, to help them. Because there are people who, when it comes to writing a review or a testimonial, don't know what to say. I like the product, you know, <laughs> they just don't know what to say. And so I have seen individuals uh, who have given that generic template of things you could say or, you know, just to kind of help them get that momentum going. And by all means, if you are writing a testimonial or a book review, share, share what it is you liked about that book. How did it help you? How did it inform you? What did it change in your life or in your perspective of whatever that key element was? You know, for example, with your book, you know, somebody reading, you know, after they have written your book and they're like, wow, that opened my eyes to X, Y, and Z and, and the process of blah, blah, blah write that stuff down, take those, and then put that into that review and put it on, you know, Amazon or, you know, the various different Goodreads, the various outlets that people look for those reviews before purchasing a book. So hint 101 <laughs> for today. <laughs> Yes. Yes, it's it's um I think a lot of people are intimidated by writing a review and uh they don't realize how I said it's not for me, you know, it's really it's not so much for me, but like uh, Amazon for instance mm -hmm. uses a uh a robot or a bot whatever formula that you know, they'll sub give you this much support if you have this many reviews or that much support and promote you better if you have, you know. And it's, again, it's uh, all the red tape yes. involved with anything you do. Yes. It's, it's part of that process. I mean, you know, I, I don't need accolades necessarily from anyone. I mean, I, I get them anyway, but I, I just... I don't need that. I, it does I just need it, it to sell the book, basically. Yeah, it helps a lot you know, for so that, um, are the algorithms. I, and like you said, for those different platforms to, if they, if there's a lot of action, you're right. They have those bots out there and, and it does, it does position the author, that book, that product, that service uh higher so but and social media is the same way oh go ahead right and you don't real yes and you don't realize all that i mean this again this is part of the writing process that you don't i mean going into it you don't think about any of this stuff you know i mean for me i didn't think about marketing <laughs> If I thought about marketing on day one <laughs> of writing, I probably never would have written a book. <laughs> you know, that's that's like that's what my friend said. She's like, "Oh, that's why I never wrote a book because you know you're still working on it. I'm going to have a <laughs> relaxing summer vacation, and you're going to be marketing your book." <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to re be relaxing all the time. So, so that that was the whole point why I retired, Leslie. You know, <laughs> but I actually, I I mean, like I said, I love I love the I I when I first started writing this book, I really only thought that I would write the book. I didn't think past the book. Um, and 
again, the book came from the whole idea that my friends always said, and, and my friends always said this in New York too. When I lived in New York, um, they always said, you know, it would be like four single women and we were kind of like sex in the city type women. And it was that kind of, gosh, we should write a book, you know, on the, our adventures. And um, we never did, you know, it was always that we should. And, and so in teaching, it became the same way. It was like, gosh, we could write a book about this stuff. We should write a book about this stuff. No one would believe it, you know. Uh, you, it's like you can't make this stuff up. And I was like, yeah, let's write a book. Let's write a book. We're all going to be retired. Let's write a book. And nobody mm-hmm. really wanted to write the book. It was like they just wanted to leave it behind. But I feel like I guess I'm just one of those people who – feels like there's got to be changes and you know mm-hmm. we're part of that change that's part of what we do in our lives and the way writing is a way to communicate that you know mm-hmm. and and to help people grow and I think that um I I just remember having some some kids and I taught special ed pull out and they wrote the most incredible stories one year. I don't know. We had such a, an inspired, I mean, I did a lot of fun activities. We did a lot of activities and breaking down stuff and the stories they came out with were amazing. I still have them to this day. This is, it's probably got to be, you know, 15, 14, 13 years ago, and I kept them because I don't, I don't know that people are really given the yeah. chance or there's so much direction in writing now. I mean, it, you know, it, it uh, they, they tell you, you know, you did, you gotta do this and you gotta do that and you gotta say this and say it this way. And, and instead of, letting them flow and then going over it with them and clarifying it, you know, it's really a, um, in a way they've killed, there's a lot of killing creativity in school, I think. So I I think that's an important part of the writing process is to let kids go, let them say what they need to say and clean it up after you know again mm-hmm. it's just i think that's and like i said that's part of my process so that's me um but i think that there is such a thing as over instruction you know oh do the do the circles and the outline and and yes i mean i can use that as a tool for people who are who are stuck But I think that organically letting it Mm -hmm. go where it's going to go naturally is kind of a fun way to work. Yeah, that's how I write. I have a hard time with an outline because I'll wander off. And it's like, I want to explore this. It's not on the outline. And it's like, no, I, I want to explore this. If it works, I'm going to keep running with it. If it doesn't work, then I'll come back and start where I, you know, where I stepped off the path that, you know, to me, the creative process should not be bright, you know, bridled back or held back by somebody's rules. Even if those rules are my rules, <laughs> I think creativity needs that that right. room to breathe and and to expand and it, creativity has a natural course and it's not the same with each book it's not the same with each project so again break the rules <laughs> exactly i mean i yeah i i mean i think that it like i said it it's different i mean it's different when i write poetry and it's different it's just but it, it's still, it's still for me organically coming up. Um, 
But one of the things that I think do the, you know, I mean, I, I just think that kids need more structure to be taught earlier in the grades when it comes to writing and reading. And that even though like we used to take a sentence and break it down and, you know, when I was in school and I don't feel like they do that anymore. They don't, they don't do grammar as okay. well as they used to. And a lot of kids don't get the structure of writing and have a lot of difficulty. I mean, writing has become kind of an obsolete thing in school in, in a way. Um, the kids don't like to write. They don't want to write. Uh, it's, it's, you know, they can type it, but they just type the minimum. And uh, Oh, no. Uh, not all kids, of course, but just, you know, a lot of the a lot of the kids that I teach anyway at, so, at my school. But what is, uh, where can people find yeah. you on the internet? Uh, share your website. It's uh, Leslie K. Brooks Productions.com. Is there one last message that you would love, that pearl of wisdom that you would love to share with the listeners? Um, yeah, I would say, you know, follow your heart. I mean, you know, in high school, I, I wanted to be a, uh, I, I was going to be an actress, a writer, or a math teacher. And I didn't know which one I wanted to go in because I loved all mm -hmm. of them. And uh, I still, I still do. And I guess I chose acting. I won some awards and best actress and I was, you know, swept off my feet. And I thought that was going to be, you know, a fairly easy road for me. And it wasn't. <laughs> but, um, and of course it came around to, uh, I came around eventually when I got out of the profession and went to teaching, I... I didn't know that I would end up teaching math, you know, a lot of the time, uh, which was kind of a, a weird segue of, you know, how things happen. And then all of a sudden it was like I got out of that and the opportunity to write showed up and I took it. And I think that it's important to look at our early dreams and, and follow them, you know, follow what our heart is telling us to do and not necessarily what we think we should do or what others think we should be doing. Um, yeah, I did have to take some time off of work to write, but I think that it was an important thing for me. And I, I, I was really proud that I accomplished this. This was an accomplishment mm -hmm. and I did what I wanted to do and I have more in me. So I think it's important that we follow our dreams and know that we can, we can conquer whatever we put our minds to. <laughs> yes, we can. I think that's my message. Thank you. Thank you so much. So. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. I am so grateful for our time together and uh, leslie i keep writing keep expressing your voice because <laughs> our words have power you. you know so they do absolutely more power than you know mm -hmm. i was going to say one guy said to me i uh, wrote to me that he didn't like choice of words happily um uh, the the view from the trenches because it's not like teachers are at war and you know he thinks of being in Vietnam when he that that that's what he thinks of when he hears the word trenches and I didn't mean it like that no. of course I, I mean I meant being in the middle of middle of the well I guess it is in a way it's a, a kind of a battle right now you know between learning and not learning um and especially with the pandemic it was like that uh but 
Yeah, I mean, I think that in any place you can put yourself in the trenches is really a way to immerse yourself, that you're immersed in something, yes. you know. But there are people out there who see things differently. And I didn't want to insult anybody, and I, I still don't. And, you know, so I agree. Words have power, and you have to choose your words carefully. So. Yep. Well, thank you again, and I appreciate your time. It has been my pleasure. I really, I, I really enjoyed this time well, that we had welcome. together. <laughs> Before we end our time together, I'd like to say thank you for listening to my conversation with Leslie Brooks. To access her website and learn more about her services, Visit pen to paperpress.com backslash podcast and select the show notes page for this episode. There's a good chance someone you know needs to hear this episode. Help spread the wisdom. Share it on social media. You never know who else needs to hear the messages that were weaved into our conversation. To receive future episodes in your inbox, subscribe to the pen to paper press newsletter and follow the Pen to Paper Press podcast on your favorite application. Take care and until next time, keep your pen to paper and write. Your words have power. Your story matters. Bye for now.